Folks, will you please put your hands together for James Cox? In uh, 1984, I was 17 years old and I had just graduated from high school. And on a Tuesday afternoon in late June, I discovered that I was the subject of a police missing persons case, complete with a sheriff's deputy-led multi-county search effort, posters for the telephone poles, the whole bit. And I had no idea. Now, it started the Thursday before when a bunch of us guys that worked at Little Caesars Pizza were all hanging out at my buddy Chris's house after work. Now, we always hung out at Chris's house because Chris's mom, Mary, was cool, <laughs> which meant she let us smoke pot. So Chris was an only child, and Mary was a single parent, and I think she wanted to kind of keep her eye on us, so she let us do that there. Now, in addition to being cool, Mary also happened to be smoking hot. She was absolutely jaw-droppingly gorgeous. The most beautiful woman I had ever met face to face in my entire life up to that point. Every single guy in this group had a thing for her, and we never let Chris forget this for a second. <laughs> it, it kind of defined Chris for us. We used to introduce him to people as the guy with the hot mom. Now, this particular Thursday, we were all hanging out at Chris's house playing video games, and Mary comes out of the kitchen and says, I got five bucks, I can kick all your asses at Pong. <laughs> and we laughed, because even in 1984, Pong was pretty old school. Uh, but normally, Mary would come in on one of these nights and say something funny, or just say hi, check us out, and then run off and hide wherever moms go when there's a pack of teenage guys in their house. And this particular night, she came in and sat down on the sofa right next to me. And I remember feeling a little bit of butterflies in my stomach and the back of my knees getting a little weird because I'd had a thing for this woman for a long time. And when she sat down, she reached up and grabbed my right bicep and gave it a squeeze and said in a half whisper, have you been working out? <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't really know what to do with that, so I didn't do anything with it. And the night went on, and, and Mary was hilarious. She was telling stories and jokes and talking shit to people, and it got really kind of late. And I remember I was standing up playing video basketball, and I was putting on some body English, you know? And I see that Mary is unmistakably checking out my ass. And I really didn't know what to do with that. So I just kind of stared at her. And she eventually caught my eye. And instead of looking away sheepishly, like I would have done, she smiled and said in that same half whisper, you have been working out. <laughs> well, my brain melted down like <laughs> reactor four at Chernobyl. I mean, I was done. I tossed my controller to one of my buddies. And I said, I need a drink of water. And I started to go, and Mary grabbed my right arm and said, no, 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 I'll get it, and kind of gave a tug. And then she grabbed the back of my shirt with her left hand and pulled me down into her lap. And my feet shot out in front of me, and the room exploded in laughter, and I'm absolutely mortified, turning every color of purple you can imagine. And Chris is yelling at me, get off my mom, you dumbass. <laughs> And I finally got my feet down, and I'm trying to get off of Mary without touching her, which is difficult. And she's making a show of getting me off her lap with her right hand, but with her left, she's still pulling me down. And I panicked, didn't know what to do, so I went limp and rolled off her lap onto the floor. <laughs> and I popped up with an apology. And like I said, it had gotten kind of late. And Chris, I think, got annoyed by all this. And he's like, all right, everybody, get out of here. I'm going to bed. So we started gathering up all our stuff to leave. And I was bumming a ride off one of my buddies because I didn't have a car. And Mary slides up behind me and says, hey, Jim, can you help me out in the kitchen here for a second? So I figured, you know, it's a tall person request. I'm going to go kill a spider or something. And I follow her behind the swinging doors into the kitchen. And the door swings shut. And Mary kissed me right on the lips. Now, I had been kissed an appropriate number of times for a 17-year-old kid. I had had two serious girlfriends in high school, and by serious, I mean we had sex all the time. But it was awkward sex, it was embarrassing, literally and figuratively poking around in the dark. 
But I had at least been kissed enough to know that I had never been kissed like that before. It knocked me back against the door. Now, Mary took a step forward and she put her hands on my hips and looked me right in the eye again and said, I'm going to pick you up after work tomorrow night, so don't make any other arrangements. And she kissed me again and pushed me out the kitchen door. Now, I really didn't know what to do with that. Uh, I didn't tell anybody anything. I didn't sleep at all that night. For the first couple hours, I tossed and turned, over, going over the events of the night over and over, trying to figure out where did I make the mistake? Where was I picking up the wrong signals? I mean, I had seen The Graduate before, so I knew this kind of stuff existed. <laughs> but I didn't know that it actually happened in real life. And then it dawned on me that I was actually being seduced by my friend's gorgeous mom. And what did I think about that? I mean, this was the first time in my life. I didn't really have the words for it at 17, but it's the first time I ever really got this concept of consent. I had asked for consent many times, tacitly mainly, and gotten it a fair few, but I had never given consent to anybody for anything that I could remember. I mean, I was 17, this was my friend's mom, and I had had a thing for her for a long time, but you know, my 17-year-old self didn't really know what to do this, so I had a real turmoil going on, and I had to look inside of me and decide what it is I really wanted to do, and it took me all of maybe four seconds to decide <laughs> that I wanted on that train, and I wanted to know where it was headed. And, I mean, as long as I felt safe, no boyfriends coming in to kick my ass or something, I was gonna kinda see this through to the end. So I go to work, and the day f flies by. The only thing I ever, that I really remember from it was, dude, she's not going to be there. What if she's there? What if she's there? Dude, she's not going to be there. <laughs> but I got off work, and she was there, just like she said she would be. So I opened the door to her little VW Bug, and I got in the passenger seat, and she looked me right in the eye again and leaned forward, and this time I kissed back. So we drive to her house and all the lights are off and I didn't ask her where Chris was. I figured at this point she had that covered. <laughs> and we weren't there 20 seconds and we're at each other. Clothes are coming off, within a few minutes we're both shirtless. And I remember trying to push her over towards the sofa and she took me by the hand and walked me back into her bedroom. Now if that wasn't remarkable enough, she then did something that absolutely changed my life forever. She turned on the lights. <laughs> now, I had said I'd had sex a few times, but it was always in the dark. We were ashamed. It was a moral collapse of our, of our, of our you know, we were just giving in to these animal desires. Sex wasn't beautiful, it was dirty, it was shameful. That's what it was. It was shameful. Mary was the first person that I had ever met who was not embarrassed by their sexuality. She was a fully integrated sexual being who celebrated it. She opened up a world to me that I didn't even know existed. I had always kind of thought the lessons that I'd been taught about sex were total bullshit, but Mary really confirmed it. She gave me permission to enjoy sex. Now, we had a lot of sex that, I, I got there Friday night and I was there till Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> we had sex. In the kitchen, we had sex in the living room, on the floor, in the shower. I missed my shift Saturday night because we were having sex. We went out for food on Sunday night and wound up having sex in our car. But it wasn't the sex that changed me. It wasn't. It was the ease and the grace that Mary brought to sex that opened my eyes. Now, Tuesday morning came, and she told me that Chris was going to be home that afternoon, and I had to go. So we had a late breakfast and had sex, and took a shower together, and I got dressed with my Little Caesars uniform shirt, because that's all I had. <laughs> and I needed a ride home, because I didn't have a car. So I called my buddy Merlin, he's my best friend, and he picked me up a couple blocks away from Mary's house, because I was being discreet. <laughs> and I get in the car, and he's all questions. He's like, dude, what is going on? Your mom has gone batshit crazy. 
She told my mom that the deputies were there and they were going into Rock Island, Henry, and Scott counties looking for you. She made posters for the telephone poles. Dude, where the fuck have you been? I went from being king of the world to feeling like I was gonna get arrested the minute my mom stopped beating me. So we roll up to my parents' house and I don't see any cop cars or anything, but I go in the front door and it was a total shit show. My mom was thrilled I was alive for about three seconds and then started in on how big my head was, how long labor was, and for pushing that out of her vagina, she deserved better. And she was right, and I apologized over and over and over, and eventually she calmed down enough to call the cops to tell them that I had come home, just like they told her I would. And they insisted on coming out to interview me. Now, I couldn't figure out what they could arrest me for, but I also kind of wanted to be cagey. I didn't really want to say what I was doing, but the police have this way of wearing you down and asking you questions that you feel compelled to answer. And eventually, standing in front of my mom and dad, I said that I got picked up after work on Friday and spent the weekend in bed with a beautiful older woman. The cops didn't believe me. <laughs> One of them got up in my face and said, now, James, during your ordeal, <laughs> did you feel coerced or held against your will, threatened or assaulted in any way? And I burst out laughing right in his face. It's like, against my will, coerced, are you out of your mind? I had just gotten the most incredible education on sexual integration personal awakening and joy that anybody has ever received. Mary didn't just fuck my brains out, she fucked my shame out. She opened for me the door to a lifetime of joy and sex. And Mary, if you're out there anywhere, I just wanna say thank you. I owe you so much.